Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Today is Monday, January the 24th, 2022, and we have quite a bit to cover. Um, I don't think I need to detail some of the events occurring with respects to COVID and what's going on in Ukraine for you folks, but we're going to be jumping a little bit all over the place with respects to global news. But I feel like, and the reason I structured it in this way, as you see when I start to read it out for you folks, is because I feel we need to take a step back and look at the big picture aspect of what's occurring relative to both Ukraine and COVID. So let me just say right off the bat. Does it not seem interesting that right when countries such as Romania and other nations, as we're going to uh, uh, cover shortly, are pulling back on the COVID restrictions, that all of a sudden there's a ramp up globally with respects to Russia and a war in Ukraine, right? Whereas a month or two ago, it was all about China and Taiwan, at least on, on the, the, in the surface level media, uh, mainstream media establishment side of things. Again, something to consider, but let's jump into it. So first and foremost, the United Kingdom, by the way, we're going to be covering news all uh, from the past 48 hours as well to catch up. The United Kingdom has accused the Kremlin in Russia of a plot to, quote, install a pro-Russian leader in Ukraine. The Russian foreign ministry then responded by saying, and I quote, Anglo-Saxon nations are escalating tensions, end quote, and dismisses the claims as nonsense. You know what? It's it's a it's a chess game. I mean, at the end of the day, the first thing I thought of, maybe I'm wrong, but the first thing I thought of was the UK was told by the Americans to make this statement. That's what I thought of. Um, it's possible that's not the case, but we know again the strategy of post World War II allies versus that of Russia and you know China and a few other nations. Um, <clears throat> we'll see here uh, the next thing is that up to a hundred thousand people take to the streets in brussels today and if uh, we uh, play some of the clips which we probably won't do for the sake of time here because there's so much more to cover it looks to me at least i'm not saying it is but it seems to me to be a lot more than a hundred thousand people protesting the uh, covid uh, mandates within brussels so take that as you will the next thing is that prime minister jacinda ardern declares new rules in new zealand and puts household contacts in quarantine for almost a month um, this was shortly after I believe there was only, if I'm not mistaken, 84 cases discovered throughout the entire country of New Zealand with respects to Omicron cases. So, again, take that as you will. I'm not going to lean in either direction. The next thing is that Antifa Black Bloc attacked police and government buildings in Brussels. Up to that point, the pro protest of up to 100,000 people against COVID restrictions was peaceful. Uh, following these clashes, the protest was dispersed by the police. Um... This, folks, for me, is not to talk about Antifa. It's not about... I will be totally honest with you, folks. On a personal, political, opinionated basis, I do tend to lean a little more conservative. However, the reason I say that is because I want you folks to please understand I'm not trying to make this point to push a certain narrative in your mind. The reason I want to bring this up is because notice when there's something peaceful, there's always some type of group or entity that creates a problem. For example, in this particular case, there was a peaceful protest of you know, six figures of people, hundreds of thousands of people, or 100,000 or more, all of a sudden, this group, which happened to be Antifa, comes in and messes up the whole thing. Again, it's not about Antifa, liberal versus conservative, human on human. Look at the big picture. Why every time there's something peaceful that's actually making progress on a mass scale, there's something that, an event or something that comes in to break it all up. It's that duopoly of constant distraction, in my humble opinion. The next thing is that Dr. Fauci says, and I quote, we may need to boost again. End quote. I'm leaving that there. The next thing is that thousands gather in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. as speakers for yesterday's rally against vaccine mandates take the stage. I don't know yesterday. I think Joe Rogan attended. I don't know if he spoke. I wasn't really following so much, to be honest with you folks. I know Dr. Malone spoke and... I saw nothing wrong with what was spoken there. I didn't see anything wrong with, uh, I didn't see any issues with respects to any type of inciting of violence or extremism, you name it. His, Mr. Malone's speech, in my humble opinion, was from what, I, from what I gathered and from the context in which I saw it in, seemed to be encouraging just thinking for yourself. So, again, just my opinion. I could be wrong. The next thing is that in Israel, it's time to give a green light to moving beyond the vaccine pass, a, uh, the Jerusalem Post newspaper calls. And I quote, the general public needs to be free to return as normal a life and routine as possible, end quote. Again, this is what I mean by how, see, notice how when the COVID narrative begins to collapse with respects to the mandates and all that, all of a sudden there's issues in Ukraine. So, Let's take a look here. Uh, the next thing is that protests in Washington, D.C., Dr. Robert Malone claimed the media and big tech push narratives that, quote, distorted public policy with regards to the pandemic, uh, end quote. He also mentioned psychological manipulation. His Twitter account was recently suspended. Right, exactly. 
Now, getting back to Ukraine for a little bit, U.S. has ordered families of all American embassy staff in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, to leave Ukraine by using, quote, commercial or other privately available transportation options amid fears of a Russian invasion. Um, again, take, take that as you will with respect to what they're, they're, they're saying is going to occur. And don't put it past them, folks, by the way, for this to be a pure scare tactic from both sides for the sake of trying to um, harness or control the COVID narrative a little bit better. And yes, I'm referring to Ukraine. So again, we got to consider all options. Speaking of which, Ireland has told Russia its plans to host live fire naval exercises off the country's coast are, quote, not welcome. But the Irish defense minister said the country had no power to stop it. It comes amid rising tensions over a buildup of Russia's military forces on the Ukrainian border and threats of consequences for any invasion from the U.S. and its allies. Ireland, however, has a long-standing policy of military neutrality and is not part of the NATO military alliance. Again, this is actually, t to be fair, I appreciate Disclosed TV who reported this for making that statement because I was just going to say, yes, the Ireland can call for Russia not to do it, but if Ireland doesn't have the power to stop them, what are you going to do? Putin knows this. Basically, you can, like I say, all these, even these UN individuals, they call for this, call for that. But when you call for stuff, what's going to happen, right? So, um, Speaking of which, Biden is considering deploying several thousand U.S. troops as well as aircraft and warships to NATO allies in the Baltics and Eastern Europe. Uh, speaking of which, France, Spain and Denmark and Netherlands, excuse me, deployed additional warships and aircraft to the Baltics and Eastern Europe amid tensions with Russia. Let's take a pause on that for a second. The United Arab Emirates Air Defense is, has engaged multiple targets over Abu Dhabi. Explosions were reported. There was footage as well. Uh, aircraft going into Abu Dhabi airport is in holding patterns as a precaution. I don't know who that could have been. If that was Iran, I, I, it's hard to say if it was the Houthis, but I mean, if you see some of that footage, it reminded me very similarly of when Israel and uh, excuse me, Hamas went, went at it uh, from the Gaza Strip. Um, so again, there's tension all over. There's tension all over. It's, it, there's no other way to put it. Uh, and I'm sure it's much deeper than that, whether it's on an esoteric level or even on a, a, an intelligence aspect. So the next thing is that Pope Benedict admits false statement in abuse report. In 1980, he, took, he indeed took part in a meeting about a priest who had become conspicuous. Again, you see, I, deny, 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 don't say anything, and all of a sudden, yeah, well, I did it. And then what's going to happen to him? I mean, again, it's not for me to decide what should or shouldn't happen to him. But you see, like, it's just it's this this world. This, it's a theater. It's, it's a joke. I'm sorry to say, but it is. Um, the next thing is that Turkey imposed three days of power outages a week to industrial zones after shortages of natural gas from Iran. Again, this is very strategical. See what's going on in the United Arab Emirates. Look at what's happening with them and the Houthis. Look at Turkey and Iran. Lots of things are going on. Look at ISIS. Look at the Taliban. Lots of moving parts here. Some argue that maybe this never would have happened if the if the if uh, the West never got involved in the Middle East twenty years ago or even before that to begin with. But we can debate and extrapolate and speculate. But it's I mean it's terrible to say, but it's done. The West got involved. It is what it is. And now look what we have in the Middle East. I'm not saying it's the West's fault, but I'm also not not saying that either because it's you guys see what I mean. It's it's tough to say. Um, the, and then at the end of the day, we're just going to go back to uh, speculating, so there's no point. Uh, the next thing is that the British High Court has ruled that Julian Assange, uh, WikiLeaks is Julian Assange, can appeal his extradition case to the UK Supreme Court. This is great to hear. This is, again, the surface level of the law being used. Hopefully that this is as blatant and and pure as what's been stated here with respects to this law not being able to be broken or something like this and this appeal actually having legitimate validity to it and actually standing a chance. Let's see. Again, this is that sort of conflation, in my opinion, between the surface level of the law that these elites try and uh, 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 use when it works for them and then avoid when it doesn't. So... Uh, the next thing is that the Russian MOEX or the MOEX stock index plunged 7.5%. I'm sure that Russia expected this, not defending them, but I'm sure, again, any time a war seems to be ramping up, there's an initial plunge generally, I think. I don't want to say that factually because I'm not an economist. I don't have the numbers in front of me. But um, the next thing is that Australia and the United Kingdom are beginning the evacuation of diplomats from Kiev and Ukraine. Okay, Um Bill, the next thing is that Bill Gates wished everyone in China a very happy lunar year and praised the country's response to the pandemic in a video released on Sina Weibo. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Now, look, this is nothing against the people of China. I want to be very clear. But why is Bill Gates praising 
this why is he projecting this form of praise with respect to the way the pandemic was handled relative to the ccp being in control and give i'm sure the ccp had to give bill gates the approval for this video to go out there that's what i look at what's the dynamic there strategically that's that's at least what i look at uh the next thing is that shots were fired on a university campus in heidelberg germany two were dead including the suspect and several people injured police said again um it's unfortunate we're going to follow up on that to see what that could have been at this point folks i'm not trying to start a conspiracy truthfully but we have to consider could this have been an intelligence operation to justify some type of domestic law going into place there's so many different moving parts that i i don't want to say that it's nothing i mean I, with respects to the intention of the shooter i hope it's as simple as i mean first off i hope the shooting never happened to begin with but i hope it's as simple as someone uh you know, had a very uh, unfortunate mental health issue and went to shoot something up, but even uh, shoot people up. And even then, that's terrible. Even then, we have to consider, was this person being mind controlled? So, by the way, I just want to be very clear. I'm not saying I hope the guy just shot people up. What, I, what I'm trying to say is I hope it's as simple as him not being mind controlled by some direct energy weapon or something of the sort. I don't want people, this should have never happened in the first place. Let me be clear, uh, just to clarify that. Um, the next thing is that, in Croatia, Enough is Enough initiative has collected enough signatures to initiate a referendum on the abolition of the COVID certificates, uh, c certificates Novi list reports. Again, they, uh, the people have spoken, the government is listening, assuming this is the, the, le the legislative process in which they've designated that country to go f through with respects to the system. Sure, great. The people say enough is enough. That's how we should be, in my opinion, right? Uh, assuming that's the, the entire context there. The next thing is that Putin discussed, quote, strategic partnership with Cuba in a phone call with President Diaz-Canel. Um, again, it's strategy, guys. It's strategy. He, he knows... Um, it's to move um, again, as I've said a couple few months ago, I believe I, I believe the countries are China, Iran, Turkey, Pakistan. Um, I don't know about India, Russia for sure. And I think a couple others, please forgive me off the top of my head. They're they're all trying to move off of the U.S. dollar very rapidly. Uh, so, again, I could see why, for example, Putin making a phone call to the president Diaz Canel of Cuba would again. It, it's strategy. It's a chess game. He's, he's, he's moving forward with respects to Ukraine. He's trying to uh, corner the U.S. in a lot of different regards. If I'm not mistaken as well, I believe China and Russia uh, blocked the um, United States' uh, ability to slap sanctions on North Korea even more so. So again, we see these other countries saying again, coming together and going, the enemy of my enemy is my friend because, you know, the United States, we have a common enemy. This seems to be the case, right? And again, we can argue very strongly that this capitalist market of these billionaires and milking the middle class over and over with in the West has created this to some extent because they've shift, shift, uh, shipped excuse me, jobs overseas, which allowed China to make more money to therefore invest in its military more. I, you see what I'm saying, guys? So anyway, sorry for that little tangent. The next thing is that the Biden administration is writing up military orders for units to be sent to Eastern Europe, according to CNN. And Biden plans to hold a secure video call with European leaders on Ukraine today per a white house statement again it you know it's yeah it, i just find it quite ironic as i've said at the beginning of this uh crack in that right when the covid narrative is collapsing and people are saying this is enough they, and they're outlasting the politicians with respect to the protests and the fighting back and all the the metaphorical not literal well some cases it's gone literal in physical fights but now it's time to create another dilemma that's what I see here, at least. Uh, the next thing is that U.S. Senator Ron Johnson is moderating a panel discussion of doctors and medical experts on the global pandemic response. Again, I see nothing wrong with that, with holding a, a panel discussion on this. This is exactly what it's supposed to be. Now, think of Ron Johnson what you will, but I mean, essentially, again, as crooked as all these most of these politicians seem to be, it's nice to see that there's some type of discussion occurring. However, we could, as a, as a species, really, not even as a country, as a species, we could be doing a lot better, in my humble opinion, uh, with respects to, honestly, everything, working together, you know, whatever. But that speaks to a much larger picture. Um, the next thing is that Trump's Truth Social wants to be most family-friendly, uh, wants to be the most family-friendly app by using Silicon Valley artificial intelligence company to auto-moderate sexually explicit content and posts that include violence, bullying, hate speech, and spam. 
the thing is, I'm totally fine with that. I'm, I'm against the bullying and all that stuff. The problem is we have to define what the AI sees as bullying and things like this, right? And I'm not saying to allow for violence, not at all. But the AI needs to be able to detect the context in which a post was made relative to what it's investigating. So, again, we gotta, we'll gotta we follow up on that because we won't know until it comes out and all these things, right? So, um, the next thing is, actually, I wanted to read you folks, by the way, on the right-hand side for those watching, here's a little visual uh, from Twitter, Ukraine versus Russian military by the numbers and all that, you know, again, for those that were, are watching on YouTube. But I want to read you a quote from Aaron Rodgers that he said about Biden because, you know, when someone of this stature starts saying these things, it makes you think that, you know, people like you and I really aren't crazy. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that we got to listen to a football player to, to have our beliefs confirmed. I'm just saying it's now getting to this point where you, you can't stop it. These guys are saying what you and I are saying. And and Aaron Rodgers says here, and I quote, when the president of the United States says this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated, it's because him and his constituents, which I don't know how there are any if you watch any of his attempts at public speaking, but I guess he got one million votes. Um, now, the next image, uh, one more quote, is Aaron Rodgers saying again, but when you say stuff like that, and then you have the CDC, which how do you even trust them? But then they come out and talk about 75% of the COVID deaths have at least four comorbidities. And you still have this fake White House set saying that this is the pandemic of the unvaccinated. That's not helping the conversation, end quote. I look, I tend to agree with him. I understand if people disagree with that, but I tend to agree with him. He's making a point. There's a fake set. You know, all these things are recurring. There's all this fear mongering. And then the second these politicians, for example, in Germany and the UK, start, you know, free, uh, trying to fearmonger the masses two, three weeks ago about Omicron, but they start getting the same one trying to, the same ones uh, pushing this fearmongering agenda, in my opinion. All of a sudden, in Germany, there's major investigations into embezzlement of those same politicians. Then all of a sudden, those politicians drop the, the uh, start discussing about dropping restrictions on Omicron. Same thing with Boris Johnson in the UK and his whole crew there. Everything's looking terrible right now. So what do you do to make things look good? Because of his, you know, Friday night, fr wine dine, wine night Fridays or whatever. You, you see, guys, it's all a joke. The second they feel a little bit of the heat or the pressure, they, they back off. So, again, um, now we could argue that this pressure, some of you may be screaming through your phone saying, Dave, this is a, an intentional pullback to come back stronger. And look, it's possible. It is, guys. Um, the next thing is that the Libyan Parliament Committee urges changes of its interim prime minister. The committee also says it would take at least nine months to prepare for a new election to avoid fraud and ensure security. Again, presuming this is legitimate and, 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 and you know, fair and on the surface level, there's no intelligence incursions of any kind, so be it. But we got to factor that in again. Um, the next thing is that Lebanon's former Prime Minister Saad Hariri has suspended his political pr career. The former Lebanese Prime Minister announces he will not run in upcoming parliamentary elections. That could be for any number of reasons. Someone's got blackmail on him. He, he Maybe he's got some health issues. Maybe he just doesn't want to do it. He can foresee uh, major issues that he might not uh, win in the future. So... I, I can understand that. He'll probably get a nice cushy job on some company and, you know, with Lebanon, it'll probably be... Uh, actually, that's hard to say, so I'm going to refrain from speculating. Uh, the next thing is that the Syria... There was a Syria prison attack shows ISIL or ISIS is, quote, absolutely growing stronger. The armed group continues to gain strength in the war-torn country after its defeat in 2019, analysts say. Again, I want to be consistent here. With respects to its defeat in 2019, people don't realize that that was under the Trump administration, and I'm not trying to defend Trump or boost him up, or, you know, uh, kiss his ass, so to speak. I'm saying this because, look, folks, now that we've taken, we've had, you know, uh, about a year or so of Biden and Trump, if Biden had taken out uh, uh, ISIS in 2019 the way the Trump administration did, the, the, the media would have been praising him like crazy, it would have been one of the biggest accomplishments ever, and they never would have stopped. So I'm not trying to say side with Trump, guys. I'm just trying to say, do you notice the, the hypocrisy here? That's all I'm trying to point out. Uh, the next thing is that Zimbabwe ex-cricket Captain Taylor admits that he took drugs and a bribe. Brendan Taylor says he faces a multi-year ban for taking drugs and accepting a match-fixing bribe. Look, he's been caught. He's accepted his actions, the consequences of his actions. He's admitted to it. Um, again, not the first time, not the last time this is going to happen. So... The next thing, I mean, there have been some cases on a quick little side note where a lot of uh, bookmakers, big time bookmakers, like global ones, ones that we don't hear the names of that, you know, run those um, servers through Costa Rica. I'm just going to leave that there and, and stuff like that. They'll sometimes reach out to an athlete and, and do this. I know this is much more common in Europe. Um, 
No disrespect to anyone who is a football or soccer fan in Europe, but I believe that is the case, particularly in the Italian leagues. Um, yeah, me coming from an Italian background mainly. I, yeah, so anyways. Um, the next thing is that Burkina Faso government has denied its army takeover after barracks gunfire. The government denies that its army seized control of the country after exchanges at gunfire at multiple army barracks. Yeah, again, they can deny, but what does the footage show? And But even then, we have to think, okay, is the footage in context? Are we looking at propaganda here? Could, could this be Burkina Faso's government putting this out themselves? Because again, when you control the narrative before anybody else does, and you bring yourself down before anybody else does, you control the way it happens. I, we got to think like this, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you guys um, go crazy in this way, but I, I, we have to. We have got, look at what's going on in the world right now. We have no choice but to consider these things. Um, the next thing is that Sudan deputy leader has met with Ethiopia's defense minister on a rare visit. Sudan's second most powerful leader, Mohamed Hamdan Daglo, is in Addis Ababa uh, on a two-day visit. Nice to see, again, even if it's just on the perception angle of things, that there's some type of communication occurring rather than warfare. So, But again, as I always say, presuming that's in within context and we know all the angles which we obviously don't um the next thing is that taliban and western officials meet in oslo to discuss afghanistan after a quote positive ice-breaking meeting and quote with afghan activists the group holds talks with western officials again you see this just goes to show you when i was making my notes for kraken this morning i was kind of giggled to myself in the sense of like look the united there what okay this whole thing of these politicians, these millionaires within the West and Europe, they have, they must have access to secrets that we don't, they must know something we don't. Sometimes, yes, but not always. The point I'm trying to make here is, notice, you can put a fancy title, Her Highness, Her Royalty, Sir, President, Mrs., you know, Mr. President, Prime Minister, whatever. At the end of the day, it comes down to power. The United States is now meeting with Taliban officials who were considered you know, ravages and all these different things before all of a sudden now they're sitting down at the table with them. Point being, human on human, these leaders are no better than you folks. Do you see what I, the, the point I'm trying to make is it? I'm just trying to get everyone in a way, in a very positive way to wake up in the sense that these leaders don't have some special advantage in some way that, that we don't. That's the thing they don't want us to realize. They don't. They're sitting down now with a bunch of people they called rebels and all these different terrible, uh, these different ner names before. Not defending the Taliban, but just trying to make a point here. You see what I mean? So anyways, and it, it really, the picture speaks a thousand words when you see the United States officials sitting down there with the Taliban. It, it really makes a point like, you know, yeah, anyways. Uh, the next thing is that uh, Pakistan's first woman Supreme Court judge, Aisha Malik, has been sworn in. Malik, 55 years old, now sits on the bench alongside 16 male colleagues at the country's highest court. Great to hear. Great to hear. Uh, my first concern was maybe she'll face some type of uh, bullying or something of the sort, but that, it's not even fair for me to speculate on that because she just got sworn in. So, I mean, I, I'm not even a, a resident of Pakistan. How can I say so? Uh, the next thing is that German Navy chief has resigned over controversial, controversial excuse me, Ukraine comments. Vice Admiral K. Achim uh, Schonbach, hopefully I said his name right, or K. Achman Schonbach, came under fire after saying that Putin deserves respect and Kiev will never regain Crimea. He might be telling the truth in a certain regard, and I, I would be careful with that word respect if I'm being honest, and I, I say that because uh, this is when it's tough. The question becomes, does Putin simply want a power balance, or does he, like, this is the thing, right? So obviously what that general, that vice admiral there is making those statements were obviously not good at all, but I mean... It seems to reflect what Biden let slip a couple days ago at the press conference relative to the, the secret NATO meetings when he said, you know, if, if, if Russia comes in just a, in a minor incursion type way, uh, we'll let it go. I mean, this uh, German vice admiral then said Kiev will never regain Crimea. Seems to be consistent. So clearly some of the behind the scenes talks are spilling out publicly. Could this also be an intelligence play that this whole thing of... Um, this resignation was an intelligence play. Maybe. Maybe. It's hard to say. I don't know. Uh, the next thing is, will oil reach $100 a barrel and how will it affect you? This was a headline, I believe, on Al Jazeera. Uh, Al Jazeera, the subtitle read, Oil is a red-hot commodity right now and a slew of factors are converging that could send prices even higher. Yeah, and then the headline goes, how will it affect you? I'll tell you how it'll affect all of us. Part of my English, it'll fucking suck. 
what do you mean how will it affect I, i'm sick and tired sorry for the rant but of all these politicians and these uh, journalists and all that making these articles and these twitter these tweets what would this mean for you what would this mean for you if we did this but they never do it what do you mean what would it mean it would, it would either freaking suck or be great depending on what you're asking us it's that's like oh my god um the, the next thing is that uh, second Mex uh, a second Mexican journalist was killed in Tijuana in less than a week. Lourdes Maldonado Lopez was murdered days after Margarito Martinez was found fatally shot in the Mexican border city. Again, cartel, in my opinion, very simple. It's, they got close to a story that was going to be broken up, that the cartel wouldn't be able to bribe off the government officials with covering up, and so they had to kill them. That's I, what I would imagine the perspective of, of the cartel would have been. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but that's usually how it goes, right? It's usually when someone is in the possession of some type of knowledge that could damage someone, they mysteriously die. So, uh, The next thing is that um, Peru oil spill cleanup is set to take weeks. Uh, the government says that Respol spilled some 6,000 barrels of oil into the ocean last week near its pump Pilla refinery, which the company blamed on unusual waves triggered by a volcanic eruption in Tonga. Even if the volcanic eruption in Tonga contributed to this, this I, I can't take them seriously. This, with respects to these, uh, I guess uh, Repsol, that's the oil company that that spilled this thing, because they're always blaming things. On it. These oil companies have uh, there's five year old children that come up with better excuses than these oil companies, in my opinion. With these, whenever these spills happen. So anyways, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, the next thing is that Chile President-elect Boric unveils a woman-majority cabinet. 14 of Chile's 24 new cabinet ministers are women, while several are former student protest leaders. Look, I stand by my personal perspective. I don't care if male, female, trans, I really don't. If you can do a better job with respects to the, the policy that you've been elected in to progress on, that's all that matters. For me, I'm a very simple person. If you, if it just so happens that all these women do a better job than uh, what uh, you know a, another cabinet would have done that was more male oriented in gender, I'll stick with the women. And it, same thing goes for men. Same thing goes for gays, trans. I, I'm just consistent. It's for me. It's not about gender. It's not about color. Not about this. Which human can do the best job? For me, it's as simple as that. Right. So. Um, the next thing is that immediate action needed on security in Haiti, according to uh, my very own Justin Trudeau. Canada hosts a virtual meeting on Haiti amid the country's political, and economic, and humanitarian crisis. Shh. Listen, I have nothing. I know actually a few uh, Haitian people, some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I truly mean that. But this thing of Trudeau making these comp, don't even get me started on Trudeau. This guy's got to. He's got to stop. He's got to stop with the just he's got to stop. He's got to that's it resign um, The next thing sorry guys if I'm a little worked up today um, The next thing it's just it's so obvious guys, you know, you see all this stuff at all around the world It's like holy cow um, The next thing is that Colombia cannot resume its cocoa aerial spraying for now the court rules a rights group and experts are praising the decision uh, Barring Colombian government from resuming glyphosate spraying of cocoa crops I am not an environmentalist relative to the knowledge that would need to be had to know what doing that does. And sorry if I sound very dumbfounded there, but I, I don't know. But again, I'm sure it's probably not good for the environment. Again, I want to be very clear. I am. I have a very distinct, different perspective on I believe we are damaging the planet, but I do not go along whatsoever with this Green New Deal, with this World Economic Forum. You know, we got to help the planet. I have a totally different view. However, this seems to be a good thing. So, uh, the next thing is that a push for tougher sentences in Indonesia sex assault cases are occurring. A slew of cases involving young girls and boys at Indonesian religiously linked schools has horrified parents, and rightfully so. Very sad to say, but from my research, Indonesia has been a country where a lot of children, both male and female, are trafficked and ex exported from from their country, trafficked out of the country um, uh, against their will. And the, again, they're, they're brought to the West, to Europe for these elites. So I understand absolutely the parents, what they're saying. Um, the next thing is that Twitter freezes hundreds of accounts backing Philippines' Marcos. Twitter says it used both human review and technology in deciding to suspend more than 300 accounts and hashtags. I, first off, I couldn't help but think that this was the CIA telling Twitter to do it. There's, uh, from my understanding... Uh, again, I'm not saying this is fact, but from my understanding, there is an unofficial quid pro quo between Twitter and the United States government, uh, particularly the intelligence branch of the United States government that then transfers over into policy decisions to keep a formal narrative of, again, going against, like we covered on Trump's Truth Social when they said, go against hate, speech, bullying, yada, yada, but define hate, speech, and bullying. 
the definition of vaccine changed like 10 million times in the last two years. So, you know, <laughs> um, the next thing is that the U.S., the final thing, excuse me, is that the U.S. seeks to speed up delivery of new F-16 fighter jets to Taiwan. Um, Block 70 aircrafts are the newest F-16 configurations with new avionics, a modernized cockpit, and an, impro uh, an improved engine. I just, look, guys, I'm being honest with you, and I'm not trying to say that, you know, I'm pro-Trump or anything like that, but how come none of this happened under Trump? Biden's only been in there for, what, a year, year and a half, and all these tensions of war are ramping up all over the world. Now, to play devil's advocate very quickly, people could argue, yeah, well, Dave, you know, this was going to happen even if Biden was in there, uh, if, if Trump was in here or not, w wars all over the world were going to happen, it's better that Biden's in there, but... Is it really better that Biden's in there? And I'm genuinely asking this, not out of bad faith, but is it really better that Biden's in there if he's sending all the, you know, jets here, he's sending military there, deployment forces in, in Ukraine? There's some people that truthfully say, you know, Ukraine, Taiwan, it's not our problem. Now, again, Taiwan got a big chip manufacturing situation there. So again, I can, sorry for the rambling, guys. I just want to give you folks some context of the different views that are taken right now politically. So uh, with that being said, thank you so very much for watching or listening. I really appreciate you folks bearing with me for those that stuck through to the end, particularly with my tangents at the end. And we will catch you all very, very soon. Cheers.